Alrighty guys, welcome to the first Prism V3 tutorial. Uh, we're going to jump right into it. So right now we've just got a scene in Unity. Uh, we're going to be taking a look at trying to uh, uh, use Prism to showcase some of version 3's new color correction. So we've got a nice photo here to do that with. So first off, I've just gone ahead and imported Prism. And right now the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and add uh, all of your built-in Unity components that you need. So we're going to go ahead and add a post-process layer. We're going to add a, a post-process volume and we're going to add uh, the post-process debug view, which is uh, very helpful. So I'm just immediately going to turn on that histogram. Always good to see. Uh, so right now we are going to go ahead also and turn off deferred fog um, and we'll probably leave those other settings. Uh, we'll just turn that layer to everything. So that our post process works on everything here. So global volume. Okay, we've gone ahead and made a new Prism camera profile. So let's go ahead and add the core Prism stack. Now, this is where you'll find most of the key Prism effects, including color correction. So let's go ahead and add that. Bam. Now, we have this on the camera. Today, we're going to be looking at a few particular elements, the prism develop uh, setting in particular. So develop is part of prism's new ultra HD color correction uh, kind of workflow. Uh, all of the color correction that is done in here in the develop setting is done in the C lab color space, which basically means uh, it's about as accurate, about as, um, you know, true to life as color can be with, uh, you know, a the widest dynamic range that you can practically get. Uh, so, as we can see, this photo, or let's just say it's a, a scene in a game where you've got some very kind of green light shining on uh, your characters in a cutscene, photo game, it's all the same uh, in terms of lighting. So we're gonna go ahead and color correct this. So we're gonna move this from magenta to green. So we can see it's already pretty green. So we're gonna move the, uh, the tint slider out around about there looks about right our color temperature we can either go warmer or cooler obviously we're already pretty cool so we're just going to move that towards the uh, the warmer or temperature round about round about there I think. starting to get some starting to get some skin tones from this image that look a lot more a lot more plausible what we can also do is we can uh, bump up the uh, exposure compensation a little bit. There we go. Get it, get it looking kind of well exposed. That's looking a little bit better, just like that. Um, that's basically what the exposure compensation does here. For those of you that have ever owned a camera, uh, a DSLR in particular before, you'll know what this does. This and effectively this whole develop uh, setting is trying to emulate a lot of elements that you'll find in uh, professional DSLRs and professional photo editing software. Um, that's why you can also go down here if you want to boost some uh, chromacities without affecting the overall saturation of the image. Um, you can tweak these sliders here. So just to show what they do, if we want to change the, uh, the green and magenta chromacity, which is very similar to saturation there, we can do that. The yellow and blue. And this is another actually very good way to kind of color correct your images as well. And dragging both these down to the bottom will just basically desaturate your image. But what you can do is you can still use them a little bit to uh, play around with just just correcting your image a little bit. So I think right there we'll we'll bump up the exposure compensation a little bit. Um, and we're actually I think looking pretty good. And you can ignore the uh, the strength uh, slider for there. That's probably going to be deprecated in a future version. Uh, but yeah, so this is looking certainly a lot closer to uh, actual skin tones than it was back uh, toggle on and off. Um, and one of the other great things about the Prism Develop is because it works in C-Lab color space, um, you can see up here in the histogram uh, well, you can't actually see my mouse, but up up there in the histogram in the top left, um, if I toggle Prism off, 
then the histogram itself doesn't actually change. And that's exactly what color correction should do. If you went into Unity's color correction and for the current 2019 version that I'm on and changed up the tint and the, uh, and the color temperature, you'll actually see that histogram up the top left change, which is a sign that Unity is not doing things correctly. Uh, but yeah, so aside from that, we can also take a quick look at Prism's new, uh, new color correction features here. So we've got quite a few. Let's go ahead and check use color correction. Uh, now these color corrections are not applied in C-Lab color space, but still uh, fully HDR. So they'll still work you know, if you want to color correct proper, um, properly in HDR. So as the, for those that don't know, shadows here, effectively what this is going to do is this is going to change uh, just the lower parts of the histogram. If we go ahead and, and just take a look at the red in the histogram, you'll actually note, notice here that what we can do when we pull up the red, just see the histogram change ever so slightly. And you may need to even zoom in a little bit here so you can really see it. But uh, it's a subtle effect that probably won't come across uh, the video but what we can do if we want to make it less subtle is we can just change the offset so there we go just by bumping up the offset a little bit you still get the effect only applying to the shadows but you can get a bit of a stronger effect and as you'll see you can see in the histogram a little bit more pronounced there by modifying the red that's exactly what we're doing so let's go ahead and switch back to the master histogram and we can you know just tweak this a little bit i think uh, why don't we add in some kind of blue shadows there, you know, make it a little bit cool. Um, pull in the shadows. Uh, I think the highlights are a little bit too green at the moment. So what we can do is we can actually just kind of invert the offset and then drag the green up. That way we'll kind of get some slightly less green highlights. In fact, they're actually... The reason that this isn't changing is because uh, our highlights are actually so dark already, they're not really counting as highlights. So I think what will happen is if we go into the mid-tones, really, really start to fix them there as well. A little bit, little bit less green, which is achieved by flipping the offset to minus one and then increasing the green, obviously. So yeah, I think that's uh, that's really starting to look pretty good. I don't think we really want to do too much to the highlights, but we will see. I think if we kind of look there, that's that's probably a highlight. Slightly hard to see, but um, works better in different images that have a little bit more dynamic range in this one. As you can see from the histogram, we've got a lot, a lot of shadows. But yeah, aside from that, we can increase the color vibrance, which probably doesn't look too good. Uh, on this image, we can increase the contrast as well. I want to make a really nice and contrasty image. Decrease that. We want to make it a little bit more flat. Uh, there you go. So let's go ahead and quickly check again how this is looking before. Really blue. You know, the skin tones are nowhere near correct. And pop it on. It's looking a lot closer to a properly color corrected image and of course this is a photo but all of this all of these techniques they are photographic techniques this is what top studios are using uh, in game development now as well particularly now that the uh, you know the flavor of the month is physically based rendering and trying to emulate cameras as much as possible so all of this applies to your game uh, as well particularly for those of you doing realistic games. Anyways, that is just about it. Oh, and just a quick note as well, uh, both of these effects will be performant on mobile. So no no worries about that. I'd probably just recommend choosing either, either one or the other if you're on mobile, just because, you know, you don't really, you shouldn't really need both of them on, on um, uh, particularly low-end mobiles, but certainly mobile compatible. Uh, there you go. And you know what? If you just want to uh, color correct using a single lookup texture, very, very easy. You can just check that, head into uh, Prism's LUTs folder, and, and just whack a LUT on. Change the lurk amount there. Really want to get crazy.
But anyways, that's it for this tutorial on Prism V3's new develop and color correction feature. Thanks for watching.